Okay, let's look at the Atwood machine problem. And we're going to work this a little bit differently than we did in class. You can choose either method I showed you in order to arrive at the correct answer. Um, this way, this method may be a little bit easier for you to understand rather than figuring out uh, which way something's rotating and what to assign the pluses and the minuses to relative to the magnitudes. So the first thing we want to do is one, we want to choose a coordinate axis system relative to each center of mass. Okay, so what I mean by that is let's just indicate the center of mass for each object. Now, There's an old saying, this is where I draw the line. So let's draw the line right there. Okay. And let's come here and draw the line here. All right. Now, we have the force tension and the force tension points up. So relative to that center of mass, Relative to this center of mass, we can say that this is the plus y direction, or we could call it any axis system, it's in the plus direction. So your force tension will be positive. Now, let's look at relative to this center of mass. We have another force acting on this body. And please remember that my vectors are not drawn to scale. So we have another force acting on this body that would be FG. And I'll call it one because we have two bodies. And that is equal to, since it's below the center of mass, I'm going to say that that is a negative M g that'll be a negative 1 mg because this is mass 1 and it's equal to 1.3 kg this is mass 2 and that is equal to 2.8 kg all right so let's go to the other side we have our force tension, which points directly up between the rope and the pulley. And I'm going to say that force tension is positive. We normally don't write down positives and negatives, well, positives. Um, but in this case, it'll be helpful for you to understand exactly what's going on. So 
let me give this a subscript as force tension one and this force tension two. And let's come along here and put in the second gravitational component. And that's going to be FG2, and that's equal to a negative M2G. All right. Now, since we know the mass, we know. that mass 2 is greater than mass 1 because only the gravitational force is acting on this mass, both of these masses. So what this thing is going to do is it's going to take a clockwise motion. I can, all right. So let's look at, it's going to accelerate in the plus direction relative to that center of mass. Here, relative to that center of mass, the acceleration is going to come down. So I can say that's going to be a minus A. Okay. So now let's resolve some of the things that we know. We know that the magnitudes of force tension one is equal to force tension two. And for simplicity, I'm just going to write that as FT when we get ready to solve our equations. Okay. So what I can do now is I can take this side and make an expression and this side and make an expression. So let's see what that looks like. So remember that I'm going to just replace FT1 and FT2 by FT. So let's just say for this we have F T minus M one G is equal to M one times A. That is equation one. Now let's look at equation two. Remember I am placing F T two with simply F T. And we have F T minus M two G equals a negative M two A. Now These two equations are very important. Because one thing that we can say about these two equations is that the FT components must cancel out. 
we can add these two equations up and solve and get the acceleration. One easier way to do that is to let the force tension components cancel out. So to get the force tension components to cancel out, I would need one of these in equation one. And let me go back and identify this as equation two. I would need one of those components to have a positive sign and another one to have a negative sign in order for me to cancel. But this is positive and this is positive. But look at my acceleration. And let me be correct in writing this. Let me be very correct in writing this. M2 minus A. Okay. Now, we have two positives for FT and we need one to cancel out. So let me rewrite the first equation. EQ1. Let me rewrite that first equation. And that's FT minus M1. G equals M1A. Now for equation two, let me just multiply through by a negative one to get me a component of a negative FT. So let's say that's negative FT, I'm multiplying through in my head by negative one. So that's going to be plus M to G equals, and multiplying that through by negative one, that would be M to A. Now, this may be a little bit easier than what the book does. Now we can sum these two equations up and solve for acceleration. Let's see what we get. Well, we see that the force tensions cancel just as they're supposed to. Like we said right over here, the force tensions are supposed to cancel. So now what I have when I add these two equations up, I have M2G minus M1G equals, I can add this and say that's M1A plus M2A. Now let's do some factoring since we have Since we have G in both of those terms on that side, and we have A on both of those terms on this side. So let's do some factoring out. So let's say G times M2 minus M1 equals A times M1 plus M2. Now, what I can do to solve for acceleration now is I can divide both sides by M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2. So that eliminates that. And I wind up with an expression that acceleration is equal to G times M2 minus M1 
all divided by m1 plus m2. Now, let's plug in some numbers. Let's plug in 9.8 meters per second squared times what is M2? 2.8 kg minus 1.3 kg. All divided by two point eight. Hmm. I'll divide it by two point eight KG minus one point three. Kg. Okay, so that would let acceleration, when you do that math, acceleration would equal 358 meters per second squared and that's what we were looking for so the acceleration this is a constant acceleration okay so, acceleration on this side and that side are the same. Now, the problem asks, what is the tension of the cord? So, let's go back and erase this. We can use either equation one or equation two to find the tension of the core since we found the acceleration. So let me just use equation one. This one is the same as this one. Don't worry about that little cancel. All right, so this is the same as that. So we can say FT minus, what is mass one? 1.3 kg times 9.8 M per S squared equals what is mass 1 1.3 kg times the acceleration that we found right here and that is 3.58 meters per second squared now To solve for that, let's see what we get. That would be Ft minus 1.3 times 9.8. 
that would be 12.74 newtons equals 1.3 times 3.58 equals 4.65 newtons. So Ft carrying the 12.74 newtons to the other side would be 4.65. 5 newtons plus 12.74 newtons and that equals 17.4 newtons and that is the tension on the cable. So the first thing you had to do was you had to find the acceleration and once you found the acceleration you could then solve for the force tension using one of these equations. Now let me make a note and say that since this is a two-body problem both bodies acting under gravitational force from each mass you could simply use this equation to calculate your acceleration you wouldn't have to go through and derive uh, the equation but you would have to know what your components are, what your coordinate system is in order to go back and solve for force tension. Now I hope this clears up any confusion that some of you had on your face in class and ask any questions. if you don't understand. All right, see you in the next video.